Earlier today, Fallout 76 got a new update. This was a fairly large update for some consoles. It was actually eight gigabytes in size, while on PC, it could be up to five gigabytes in size. In this video, I'm gonna be giving you a pretty much comprehensive recap of just about everything this adds in, changes, or actually, unfortunately, breaks, as one big thing many users have quickly noticed with this update is it broke a fairly fundamental aspect of this game. Although, fortunately, it's not all bad, as some of the changes are actually overwhelmingly positive and great changes added to Fallout 76. I know a lot of people are pretty excited and hyped around the upcoming holiday changes to Fallout 76. This update kind of brings the first part of them, but it's definitely not all of them and not even really some of the biggest parts of it. A lot of people are excited for this new gift mechanic that will be added in. You get holiday gifts and when you open them, you will earn a random reward from a set list, some of which are super valuable. For one reason or another, that's not actually going live until this Thursday at 11 a.m. Eastern Time. This Thursday, I'll have a video out on that, as well as some leaks that also have been found, but just keep that in mind if you jump in game looking for that holiday content, it's not quite here. Although, one thing that is here is actually a new free addition to Fallout 76, that with the Santatron. For a limited time, just by logging in and going onto the Atomic Shop, you can claim this for free and then place it down at your in-game camp. What this thing is going to do is work very similar to the already existing Collectron, which is a in-game utility item you can buy, so you place it down and then it will search the area for toys, coal, and eventually presents. The toys and coal will always be a component of this. The presents or holiday gift aspect of this will go live once the holiday event itself goes live and then end once that holiday event ends. And based on data mines, it has a 1% chance of finding those, but again, that won't be enacted until this Thursday. If you have both this as well as the regular Collectron, you could actually only place one down at your camp at a given time. Although with the Sanitron, if you do also own the Collectron, you can change it so the Sanitron will actually collect scrap or junk similar to how the Collectron does. This is not a built-in feature, it's just again if you own that other scavenging Collectron. Any further, this does have quite a few custom lines, which is pretty cool as free custom content. Without a doubt, a nice gesture from Bethesda. One other pretty cool change we saw to Fallout 76 was Bethesda finally made it so you could have private private worlds. As many of you know, with Fallout First, one of the big selling points was that private worlds were finally added to this game. Except, when those launched, you actually couldn't make it private. Anybody on your friends list could just join the world off of you unless you block them or remove them as a friend altogether. So today, this was finally changed. Now as you start a private world, you can select so only people in your team can join. And if you have nobody in your team or didn't invite anybody there, nobody can join this world. Or alternatively, if you launch the world while having people already in your team, only they can join and you do have a nice little private session, kind of how it should have worked to begin with. Unfortunately, it seems like due to the way this was implemented, Implemented, it's not really a perfect fix. First and foremost, if nobody's in your team and you start a private world, there's seemingly no way to invite anybody. Like if I jump on my private world and I'm like, oh, hey, I actually want to invite my friend that just got on, I would have to back out to the main menu, invite him, then restart the world. Not the end of the day, but that is rather frustrating. Of course, this also applies if anybody crashes or if you want to add one additional member, then all of you would have to back out and you'd have to restart the world after inviting them. But also, since Fallout 4 teams only allow a max of four players, players, including yourself, this means that effectively private worlds using this functionality also can only have four players if you want true private worlds. So the private private worlds are reduced to four players while the open private worlds are now eight players. All of this really just seems to be a byproduct of Bethesda reusing their in-game team functionality. Hopefully in the future we see a more permanent fix. If you kick someone from your team, it'll automatically kick them from the server so it's not like you could do it that way. So either way, definitely an improvement on the system, but it's like not really there. It's more of a band-aid fix than the appropriate or proper fix a lot of us were hoping for. But if you were just trying to play on your private world alone with nobody bothering you, this definitely does give you that option. Before we really jump into some of the major problems that presented with this patch are the less than ideal things, let's first talk about some of the stuff this patch did really well. We saw several improvements to the Battle Royale mode for Fallout 76, and these are actually pretty massive. As expected, you now have the ability to vote on maps for this mode. After joining a session, a map vote will be in progress, where you could vote for either Flatwoods or Morgantown. It doesn't automatically prompt you to do this, you actually have to open up the menu manually, so just keep that in mind. 
and whichever has the most votes will eventually win after a certain amount of time. And then, of course, you will play on that map. But separately, a surprise new addition to also come with this is they actually changed it so the starting circle, so that giant ring of fire that does slowly close in on you, will be smaller dependent on how many players are there. So take, for example, here on 35 players, it's much larger compared to 22 players where it's much smaller. This is a massive improvement to this mode and actually is almost a complete overhaul. The cap on the battle royale mode is 50 and change players. As such, in the past, when you were playing this mode with the giant circle, you're basically playing on a map made for 50 players, but most of the time games were only 20 to 30 players, meaning that there was a lot of time just running around aimlessly. You would get literally the best items and armor in the game before making it to the finale where you'd actually fight against other people with the best weapons and armor. But conversely, now that this map is much smaller, it makes it so one, the combat is significantly faster paced. You don't have the opportunity to get fully kitted out. I noticed myself running out of ammo way more often, having to use bad or melee weapons because I just needed to. There were three, four other players around me and I ran out of bullets, so I had to use it out of necessity. But even further, the games overall are significantly faster. You have a smaller play area and the likelihood of you encountering the other teams is significantly higher. This overall is a massive improvement. Also, something pretty interesting around this, it seems like each game, which circle it will be, will be slightly different different. Well, you can see these two side by side. They're in slightly different spots, so which areas of the map are included do vary somewhat. This obviously makes the game mode a lot more fun. Couple that with the fact that they just added in the old map as an additional option makes this mode feel refreshed and a lot more interesting once again. So if you've been sleeping on it or just not paying attention to it, this is a good time to jump back into it. Which speaking of, they also added in yet again the Halloween event for Fallout 76. This was previously live but then ended abruptly, so if you were working Working on this in the past, you will now have it available for the next few days. After that does finish, the Christmas event will begin, but something that is kind of interesting around that. Firstly, the rewards for the Christmas event have been data mined. There'll be six tiers of rewards, so you could win each of these various things just by gaining experience in this mode, which is actually a lot easier now because the combat is way more often and you're either succeeding or failing in games more quickly, not as much time just aimlessly wandering around looking for people. So for the holiday version of this event, each day it is live, one new challenge will unlock, and if you complete that challenge by gaining a certain amount of experience, you will unlock whatever was corresponding to that. These challenges and the rewards again have been data mined, so you can see the full list here. And as far as these experience requirements go, they're exactly the same as they were previously for the Halloween event, except there's one major, major change. That is, according to the patch notes for this recent update, unlike in the Halloween event, where if you gained experience for one of the challenges, it counted to all of them, so you had to earn 14,000 experience in general and you would unlock everything, in in this one, reportedly, that carryover doesn't count. You only start earning experience for the next challenge after you complete the previous one, which if true would mean that you would have to earn 27,001 experience to unlock all of this. As of right now, that is just based off data mines. We don't know explicitly what these experience numbers will be, but I think that it'll start to turn a lot of people off because that is a ridiculously high number, making it almost twice as difficult compared to the previous session to get all of these rewards. We'll find out the true answer to that in just a few days. Again, maybe those are just placeholders. Although to go along with this, Bethesda also enacted several different bug fixes and exploit fixes for Fallout 76. Some major exploits were resolved from this, several lingering ones that a lot of people had been requesting fixes for but hadn't actually been implemented, like a jetpack jump glitch where after jumping your jetpack would just be on, how in Nuclear Winter, even if you turned off showing other player names, they would remain on, or even sometimes enemy corpses disappearing right after death so you couldn't loot them. Definitely some positive changes, and one of the long requested ones was the 250 damage resistance bug fix. In effect, what this did was in Fallout 76, one of the legendary effects you could get on a certain weapon made it so while you reload, you do get 250 damage resistance. Except it was broken in that even though it gave you that bonus, it would break all the other bonuses on that weapon making many weapons that had this pretty useless, even though it otherwise could be pretty powerful. But seemingly, in attempting to fix that bug, Bethesda ended up breaking several other aspects of this game, including armor legendary effects in Fallout 76. 
So basically, in-game right now, for certain armor legendary effects, the most notable being the unyielding bonus, if you reload your weapon, it will break. Then you will have to re-equip your armor, just take it off and put it back on, and then it will work again until you reload again. So this is actually really, really bad, and I think this video really conveys why the unyielding effect gives plus 3 to every special stat except endurance while you are at very low health. As such, many users actually built their entire character around this legendary effect. You put very few points into certain special just basing it on the fact that it will be boosted up by unyielding. You always have to run around at low health, but a lot of people preferred that build, and it's easily one of the most common and prevalent throughout all of Fallout 76. Except now, obviously, it breaks every time you reload, which is kind of a big deal. Look at this video where his stats just drop to very low numbers. Outside of just that one, it seems to be breaking other legendary effects also. Bolstering, which also requires low health and gives you bonus damage resistance, also seems to break after reloading. Separately, things like the Strangle heart power armor also reported to be breaking as well as the excavator power armor like momentarily glitches out and doesn't give you a weight bonus anymore although then seems to fix itself and something to be wary of around this one there's a lot of misinformation or just at least mixed results around this some people are saying that the effects are broken just from fast traveling or using your scrap box some people are saying more effects are broken like vanguard's effect but in my own testing none of that was true fast traveling didn't break anything using a scrap box didn't break anything in vanguard's was never being broken. So there's definitely some kind of back and forth here. It's not clear exactly what is broken and what's not, but at the very least, just unyielding alone being broken, again, has a major impact because of how popular and how big of an impact it has on character builds. So again, Bethesda is investigating this, but a lot of users are pretty concerned around the fact that the holiday is coming soon. Bethesda has this tendency to not always fix things in a timely manner. For example, that 250 damage resistance bug that seemed to be the root cause of all of this has been in the game for months at this point. So if this wasn't to be fixed before the holiday and Bethesda taking several weeks off, that would be a fairly large problem for many players. And there's also been some reports that daily quest rewards aren't being rewarded appropriately and Bethesda is also looking into that. But if all that wasn't enough, there's also some reports that apparently weapons are starting to break a bit faster now. This is one of those ones that I would take more with a grain of salt because you can't just instantly verify it by looking at a certain stat, but there has been some discussion that either Either weapon or weapon and armor durability were tweaked in some way. Although one final thing that kind of came as a surprise in these patch notes is actually some overall challenge changes. But as I described how they're going to make some of the challenges in Fallout 76 more player friendly and have lower requirements, making them feel more like a core experience to this game. If you're not familiar, challenges are updated on a weekly basis and many players will actually grind these out. I think partly because it's just something to do in game, but also it does reward you with a atomic shot points, but some of these are really, really difficult, such as take a picture of someone in a nuke zone while you yourself are naked, but you have a very small window to do because nuke zones deal damage. These are getting changed on January 1st, 2020 though, so you can look forward to that. And one final thing, it said in the patch notes that the lobby for the nuclear winter mode would be made festive, but it definitely isn't. I don't know if this update is meant to go live when the holiday event for that mode goes live in a few days, but it didn't really seem to say that in the patch notes, and I don't know if maybe they just forgot to add that part. Either way, all around, I would say this update is really a mixed bag. Some things that needed bug fixes for a while now have been successfully fixed. We get some freebies as well as some nice surprise changes that people weren't actually expecting. The battle royale mode is now in a better state than it has been in months, and I'm really happy to see that. Conversely, on the adventure mode side of things, where most people are playing, there of course is a lot of frustration. Even with some of the new fixes, or even some of the free stuff you just got, if you were someone who was using an unyielding build, you just kind of got the game ruined for you to a degree, or at least there will be a lot more frustration while using that build, you kind of are forced to switch to something else for the time being. And it also does raise the question, as to how some of these bugs are still making it through. More evidence that we need a test server, which reportedly is coming at some point, but we still don't actually know when, and I wouldn't be shocked if it's not until after Wastelanders. Either way, that is again going to wrap it up for this one. As always again, I thank you for watching, I hope you enjoyed, and I hope to see you all next time. Later.